So the Central African Republic and Russia are striking up an unusual friendship. Let me explain. In October 2017, President Faustin Twadera visited Moscow and signed a series of agreements. Since then, it appears there's been a whole lot going on. Now, for a bit of context on the situation in the Central African Republic, CAR for short, let's go back a few years. The rebels now have only one strategic time. In 2013, rebels overthrew the president at the time, Francois Bozizé. That was after months of fighting. But what followed was not a smooth transition. Instead, there was massive corruption, economic collapse, and a breakdown in law and order. As a result, the UN banned the sale or transfer of weapons to the country. Today, aid agencies say half, yes, half of the country's population need humanitarian assistance. A fifth have been displaced from their homes. Power has been in the hands of the many armed groups, while the government only controls around one-fifth of the country. It depends on UN troops to maintain order in the capital, Bangui, as it tries to rebuild the local police and army. And that's where Russia has been helping out. It's got UN Security Council approval to train the Central African Army and to provide them with weapons. But really, why has Russia got involved? It's always maintained that its actions were in response to a request for help from the CAR. But among the agreements that the two nations have signed is one involving mining exploration. The CAR has rich deposits of diamonds, gold and uranium. In fact, Moscow has admitted that this deal is, in its words, mutually beneficial. Hmm. This is raising some eyebrows locally among opposition parties, but also in France, which is the former colonial power and the most influential foreign force in this African nation. So while it appears Moscow is doing nothing illegal in the CAR, it's making people nervous and its presence could be setting up a turf war in this faraway land.